What is up? It is time for a brand new edition of the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. We say hello to everybody who's following us live on Twitch. That audience is growing, and we're uh, monitoring the chat. So if you have any questions for Stacy and me, uh, just let us know. Oh, oh, is this, is this on my phone? <laughs> oh, Stacy's got all his devices oh. going, so he's getting feedback. Sorry, so we're, we're trying America. to clean. We're trying to clean America, it up. America, America, I'm I thought sorry. We're working with a professional. Hey, it's, a, it's a live show. You, hey, you, you know never what? know. You know what? Listen, you know, I, you know, Tim. I don't need you to say anything. Okay, this is a guy who's never. Here comes the throat punch. Okay, yeah, there's going to be hey, more than a throat punch. Stacy's working hard. Animal. Listen, listen, America. I know today I was on IG Live talking to all my little fans out there on IG Live, <laughs> and there was a request that came on. They said, hey, can we get his whispers? Is always, like, he has a fake tan. He's always red. How about he do the show with no shirt on? Oh, and, my goodness. And that was a sight that kind of scarred my mind. I didn't really want to see that. I didn't want to see a little pink little man next to me with no shirt on. Pink. Like, he called himself the human hot dog. That's what he would look like, America. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Just we, we like had a lot of fun person. in the in the uh, pre-show meeting. We had a little uh, huddle in uh, Tim's office, and he was going to show me the video of the comedian Tom Segura uh, tearing his ACL and fracturing uh, his arm in uh, multiple places trying to dunk uh, on an eight-foot rim. That that was some ugly stuff. Uh, and then and then you told us a story about Scottie Pippen when you guys were young playing pickup ball. Tell, uh, share that with the audience, Timmy. Well, Scotty wanted us to have some Ginsana when he was promoting that. So I got some. I had a... And that was a long time ago now. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, 20-some yes. years and it was, ago. And it was over the counter. You could buy yeah, it over the yeah. counter. And uh, so had some ready to go. Popped a couple. <laughs> I was feeling pretty good. So Stacy walks in to play a pickup game. Like, hey, you got to try some of this stuff and really amp up your game tonight. <laughs> and you almost gave your friend a heart attack. Yes, oh, did. yeah. He thought he was going to die. It was great. America. America. <laughs> the, way of drill, the way of drill is really good. I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> So I walk in, you know, I knew about Gensana because I knew Scotty was endorsed by Gensana, so he always took it before the games, whatever. But I never was into that kind of stuff. I was yeah. always scared to take that kind of stuff. So I was tricked into taking it by Tim. So he gives me these little two little pink little pills from Gensana. He says, hey, man. He's like, hey, Stace, try this, man. This will, this will, if you're tired, this will really pump you up today. Come on, try some. And the peer pressure got me. Yeah. So I, I tried it because I looked at Tim and Tim was talking to me like he was a dope fiend. Hundred miles an hour, like this. shooting layups hey, off the board. Oh yeah, hey, no no hey, rim. Seriously, <laughs> seriously, stay, stay, stop. Please take these. Go ahead. And I'm just looking at him like I don't know if I really want to take this. I'm looking at you how you right. And then all of a sudden he just jumped off the bench, stopped in mid sentence. Yeah. Jumped off the little the little bench and he's running down there doing like air layups. You know, just air layups. You know, <laughs> and like you know when you have a camp and they say how many layups can you do in 20 seconds. Yeah. He might have did 30. And made none. I think it was no, speed. No, none. He's like, did you eat them or did you snort them? Which one was it? I thought it was speed because I was like, so then I had taken it. It only takes like about 15 minutes to yeah. activate. So all of a sudden, I'm like, Tim, I'm like this. <laughs> I'm like, you know, and then my heart is racing. Like, it's literally racing. And I'm sitting there like, I'm like 26 years old. I'm saying, oh, my God, I'm, I'm going to die of a heart attack taking just Jeez. Vada. An over-the-counter over product the counter. gives you those kind of effects. I hope you're not doing that with those little blue pills. Oh, Oh, I, I, I do snort those. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait, what, what, what blue pills? And she'll like it too. Oh, wait, are, we talking yeah. about, are we talking about the blue pill? The Max Factor? Oh, 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 oh. oh America. The little letter. Larry the Lobster. Woo. Man, That's why true I'm confessions red. by whispers. <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't need those. I can't even work. Way too much information <laughs> about whispers right now. Hey, wait, wait, did you hear what he just said? No, I missed he it. Said he didn't need those. He can't even wear corduroys. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, a teenager again? What's going on with you? I got issues. Yeah, yeah major, you have issues. We know about that. Major issues. Wow. Someone in the Twitch chat said if uh, Timmy has no shirt on, the women viewership will go up 200%. I'm not so Ooh. sure about that. I don't know about yeah. all that. We'll I mean, lose all the men viewers. That's, <laughs> most, that's most of our audience. Yeah, you know what? And I'm right with him. I'm leaving. Yeah. You take his shirt off, his little pink body next to me. We're going to go yeah. into a different category of show for an adult audience only. You don't oh, want to see this if you're a kid. You should just wear an apron, like with no shirt on with an apron. Just walk in that might with work. a lobster on the, sh on the, on the front of it. <laughs> so a lobster on the front of the apron with no shirt on. Well, we, we should try something new here. Yeah. See, America, Timmy's cut up. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. Like, is it I mean, a little hard body there, boy? Are you working out? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my body, body's hard over here. Oh, right? I think it's my job to get this oh, thing back on the rails. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Boy, hey, please, pump. please, Mark, help me. You, you guys mentioned Scottie Pippen earlier, and he made some news uh, coming on the Bulls Talk podcast saying that uh, the Bulls 
could not compete in the Eastern Conference for the upcoming season because they have no one who can defend Giannis Antetokounmpo. He said some other things, but basically, Scotty's real pessimistic about the Bulls' ceiling with the current roster. Stacy, your rebuttal. <laughs> And there's the quote for people that are watching on YouTube well, or following us live on Twitch. Until you get an answer for Giannis, the Bulls will be a team in the middle of the road. That's according to Scottie Pippen. Oh, a middle of the road team. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on, Pip. Listen, I put love Put the Pip. Ginsana <laughs> down. Yeah, I, hey, listen. No, <laughs> put, the, put the digits down. That's what he's doing. Is the little the little liquor he's been drinking, the digits. He's got, he's got, his, own, he's got his own little, you know, whiskey. little liquor, whiskey. So... I don't know what's in it, but maybe you need to stop drinking it. Okay. It's got Jinsan in it. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, 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 right. So listen, Scotty's a Hall of Famer. He has his opinion, you know, and if that's what he thinks, so be it. The thing that's getting me about, you know, that comment is the fact that, you know, he's a former, you know, Bulls player, one of the all time greats. It'll give your team some love, man. Give your team yeah, some yeah. love. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can Well, he's you not can, on the payroll anymore. Yeah, well, you, <laughs> You know, listen, that's Mark, obvious. Mark, yeah, it's very obvious. But you know, you you can you could be critical of the team and and then also give them some love at the same right. time. You know, basically saying, hey, look, you know what? This team last year with all the injuries and the COVID, you know, that really hurt them. Losing Lonzo Ball, if they don't have, if they're not healthy this year, they have no shot at beating Giannis. You don't have to say every team in the league has a hard time guarding Giannis. That's not just the Bulls. And if if the Bulls are healthy last year with with Lonzo Ball going in there, I I just believe that series goes seven games with the Bulls having a chance to win. That's just my personal opinion. And this team this year I think is going to surprise a lot of people. I think if they can stay healthy, and that's a big if. That's always been the question with this team when they're really good, if they can stay healthy. If Lonzo Ball can stay in the lineup, you know, 70-plus games. If Caruso can stay off the injured list. Um, you know, Zach recovers from his knee surgery. There's so many different subplots in this in this whole team. But if they're healthy, they're going to be very, very good again. And the Bulls are working hard this summer. We saw that uh, both uh, Patrick Williams and the rookie Dale and Terry have been uh, doing some informal workouts with Paul George, another great small forward that can help the paw get to that next level. Well, anytime you're, you're working with an all-star caliber player like Paul George, that's only got to help your confidence. I mean, not only are you working out with DeMar DeRozan, who's one of the top small forwards in the league, you know, you're able to get Paul George to to allow you to work out with him, um, and that's awesome because he's really he's really worked hard this summer. I, this is a kid that I think is going to have a huge, huge year, a breakout season. Um, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. Um, you know, Io I think is going to surprise a lot of people. The, I've been doing my. He's re- Jack like whispers now. He's yeah, been hitting the weight room. Let me tell you something. He's I, I saw I saw him now twice now because I go over yeah. to the Advocate Center to work out. Um, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And Io's been over there both times. And I, I didn't even recognize him when he walked in. Yeah. Like, his, his body has completely changed from his rookie year. Yeah, he's not like, a rookie I mean, anymore. His shoulders, <laughs> I mean, his shoulders, like his arm. I mean, he just looks like he's put on about 10 pounds of muscle. And, you know, he was over there today, and he was. I was just like, oh, my goodness. This kid, you can tell, like, what he what he wants to do. You, you can tell that there's, there's that chip still on his shoulder that he had being in the second round. That's never going to leave him. And I think that's what's going to continue to motivate him. And then all the new guys they got here, he's, you know, he's going to try to figure out to be, where is he going to be in the lineup? He doesn't care. Because yeah. he's he going to come through training camp. It's like, y'all going to have to take my spot. And that's what I like to see. And for the young guy, Dale and Terry, he's getting a chance to see what life in the NBA is all about. I mean, he's going to have to get in the weight room because he's thin right now. And I think that may affect his ability to get minutes as a rookie. <clears throat> well, I mean, he's a little light, a little light. You know, he's 19 years old. You know, so he still got, he still got a a kid's body. You know, and give him a couple of years, he'll he'll get that right. But I think he can get on the floor. I think w- because of his defense ability, because of his length, he's six seven. Yeah, close to a seven yes, foot wingspan. Yes. Yeah, it, he's going to be out there on the floor. I think the biggest thing with with DT is is that just limiting his mistakes. You can't have those turnovers you had in the summer league. You cannot not when you get with the big boys. You got to be very efficient with the basketball. You know, you got to know when to attack, know when to pull back, know when to get guys involved. But I think if he focuses like Io did last year, just coming off the bench and being a defensive stopper, if he can do that, that gets his foot in the door, and that'll give him an opportunity to play beyond just being a defensive stopper. Another 
Bulls offseason story that's been making the rounds this week is the subject of extensions. It cut, at certain points in your contract, you have the opportunity to extend. One of the guys on the Bulls roster who can be extended right now is the veteran center Nikola Vucevic. And the question is, he's got one more year left on his deal, and his number, his salary number actually drops this year. I think it drops from like $24 million to about $22 million. And the Bulls are doing their due diligence to say, you know, what would it cost to extend you? You know, they're, they're not going to have any cap space in the foreseeable future. So the thought is, if you can get him at a good number, maybe it's best business to try to extend him for a year or two so you know you have that center position covered. That's the subject of our poll question. If you're following us on Twitter and you want to take part and make your vote, your options are, you know, extend him for a couple of years at his current salary. The second option is extend it, but only if he's willing to take a significant pay cut. The third option is just play it out, wait until next summer and see what happens, see how well he performs. And the fourth option is let him walk and find a different guy. Where, where would you weigh in on that whole thing? Okay. You're That's a lot, a, you're, a lot you're, of you're, options. You're, you're, you're <laughs> gonna, yeah, exactly. You're, you're going to get a great Vooch this year because it is a contract year. He recognizes that, you know, this could be his last opportunity to cash in on a good contract. Um, so you're going to get a good Vooch. Um, if you're the Bulls, you have to recognize that this guy, no matter how many, how much Bulls Nation some nights, uh, you know, they get on Vooch for not doing this or doing that. You know, he's not a fan favorite to some people. Right. Okay, but for other people who know the game, they know how valuable he is. He's one of the top centers in the league, okay? Whether you want to admit that or not, his numbers don't lie. Yeah, double-figure rebounds. Yes. He's among the leaders he, last year. You know, and he's he's arguably arguably the third best center in the league behind Embiid and Jokic, okay? So those guys just don't walk through the door, Mark. So you mm-hmm. got to be very careful. You know, that's why I tell fans all the time who um, have short patience with him, you got to understand, man, you know, you don't find those kind of guys. And if Vooch, the biggest thing I think the, the issue with Vooch is they like to see him post up more. Um, I, I, so I, would you. I've, yeah, heard, I've, oh, I've watched man. the broadcast. Hey, listen. Yeah, <laughs> hey, you already know where I stand on that. Because, and the only reason why I say that, Mark, is because I know what kind of post game he has. He has one of the elite post games in the NBA. And that's something, if he really utilized it and went half and half, you know, half inside, half outside, he would be, in my opinion, a deadly force in there because there's not too many guys that can guard him one-on-one in that post. When he gets that back to the basket, he's got great footwork. He can score with either hand around the rim. He can pass out the double team to open shooters. And then when you want to put him in that pick-and-pop game, he can, you know, knock down a couple threes. I thought last year he really pressed in preseason because he really didn't shoot the three very well that first part of the season. Got better as the year went along. But I thought that he kind of relied on it, kind of like how Lowry was when he was here. Lowry just wanted to stay at the three-point line. Right. Vooch is a complete player. I'd like to see Vooch post up a little bit more than what he did last year, and I think if he can do that, that is going to give a, the Bulls an element that is going to be tough to defend. Yeah, I was just looking up his numbers. He averaged 17.6 points, 11 rebounds. 11 rebounds was top 10 in the league. But the thing that people always harped on, he only shot 31% from three-point range. But the other thing that kind of surprised me, he's still only 31. He hasn't turned 32 until October. So, I mean, this is not a guy that's well past his prime. You know, people forget he left USC after his freshman year. So he's been in the league for a long time, but he's not an old player. No, and, and his you know his game's not built on athleticism. So he's a guy that you, is very durable. You know, he's a very durable guy. Um, you know, this is a guy that the Bulls need. They definitely need because if, you know, if they don't try to extend him, if it's, you know, if, if Vooch, you know, wants to stay here, um, the Bulls will do whatever they can to, to, to accommodate that because you're not going to find Vooch anywhere. You're not going to find a player like Vooch. Now, if you, if you were, if you were not going to re-sign him and you were going to let him go, then maybe you should have looked at bringing Gobert in. Or try to sign Hartenstein when he's yes, a free agent. Or, yeah. or whoever. Um, if you didn't feel like you were going to be able to re-sign him for what he's going to be worth, because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Vooch is going to have to make the decision, you know, how much is he, how much does he feel he's worth? And if he loves it in here, if he loves it in Chicago, he's playing with DeMar, he's playing with Zach, he's playing with, like, really good players. I think the biggest thing with Vooch was is that he's always been the man on a bad team. In Orlando, he was the guy. They ran everything through him. He got to touch the ball almost every single time down the floor. But in Chicago, it hasn't been that way because he has to play with other all-star caliber players. 
First it was Zach, learning how to play with Zach. Now it's DeMar. Now you got, you know, Lonzo Ball. Now you got Patrick Williams. So there's so many options the Bulls have that he has to, and I think this year will be better because it's the first, last year was the first full year that he played with all those guys. And I think he got better. Losing Lonzo hurt him because Zoe does such a great job of facilitating the offense and knowing where the ball is supposed to be at the right time. And when you got Zoe that can shoot threes and you got Vooch that can shoot threes in the pick and pop game, that's a very dangerous combination because, you know, Zoe's not afraid to go into the post and post up smaller guards. And so now you have that capability. We didn't have that when he went out. What people forget, too, is you don't, a lot of average fans don't really know how the salary cap works. And even if you let Vucevic walk at the end of next year, you still don't have any cap space. It's not like you're going to be able to go out and sign you know, an elite center to replace him. You, know, you have to try to make a trade or draft somebody, and then you start over. So you know, even though there, there were some warts on his game, in his game last year, he still is a productive player that you're not going to be able to replace just going into free agency and trying to sign somebody for the veterans minimum. And Mark, that just sounded gross when you just said he had <laughs> warts in his game. <laughs> it's like, it just got me like, I'm itching right now. It's going like, back, oh, going oh, back to Tim's earlier oh, conversation, yeah. yeah. You know, we never know what's going on. Oh, give me the hot sauce. <laughs> like, yeah. you, know, you know, like, you know, it's like, you know, Mark could have said, like, you know, he's, you know, he's got little holes in his game. He's like, yeah, he's got a lot of warts in his game. Like, oh, I'm just itching right now. Oh, my God. Did you know our 1871 sauce removes warts? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and paint. Yeah, and your and your iris. If you get it in your eye, you might be blind. <laughs> Remove your taste buds. Speaking of blind, how about the people in Las Vegas trying to set the win totals for the upcoming season? Everybody loves Boston. Oh. They're saying they're going to win upwards of fifty three and a half games, but the Bulls. That we're not really sh- showing a lot of love in Las Vegas, much like what Scotty Pippen said. People are predicting that they're going to finish sixth, seventh, eighth in the East, winning about forty four games. Uh, it's forty four and a half is what Caesars has him as. If you're, if you're is looking that at the it, Bulls so. fifteenth. Yep. Man, get the hell out of here with that! <laughs> are you kidding me? That, is that where they? Is that, is that where they have him? That is the Caesars sports book. Yeah. What were the White Sox oh, in March? Oh my Caesar's God! Sports book? Well, they're closer to right about okay, that. Okay, you know what? Mm. Uh, you know America, Bulls Nation. I'm sick and tired of these polls. I'm sick and tired. Last year. The Bulls weren't supposed to even be in the playoffs last year. They weren't even going to be in the play-in game. They had them like the 29th best team in the league, and they were one of the best teams all year last year, and then they won 44. They won They won 45 games last year, I think. Was it 45? 46. 46? Yeah. Okay. Did you get your steak hey. dinner yet? No, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Nick Friedel, paging yeah. Nick Friedel. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, don't think I ain't, ain't, yeah. yeah. Don't think I ain't, I ain't forgot about that. But America, <laughs> let me tell you something. Bulls Nation, don't listen to that bullshit. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. It's a bunch of crap. Because every time I look around, these same people in the middle of the season will be saying, I knew the Bulls were going to be good. I knew they were one of the best teams in the league. They were the greatest <laughs> team why, why, why are they so old all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> That's they Chris, lost their teeth. That's, that's Chris Broussard. That's Chris Broussard. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. That's my impersonation. Chris Broussard. Back to Louisiana. Yeah, right? you know, it's like, but I'm just, I'm so sick and tired. They did it last year. They talked so much trash on this team that, you know, oh, DeMar was the worst free agent signing in the history of, of signing free agents. And at the end of the year, they were kissing his butt. Oh, he was the greatest. Oh, he's a, he should have went to the Lakers and played with LeBron. And da, 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 da. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. This is why you play the game. I get so sick and tired of the ratings. I understand you have to do it for clickbait. I understand that. You have to have something to talk about. I understand that. But be knowledgeable a little bit. Like this a little team, bit would help, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to, to say this team, who won 46 games last year, and they've upgraded their bench with Drummond and Drogic, mm-hmm. you're going to get a healthy Lonzo back. You're going to get DeMar DeRozan. Unless you think DeMar is going to fall off, which I don't think, I don't, uh, a newsflash, have y'all watched the Drew League? Oh, yeah, he's tearing he's, it up. I mean, he's killing. <laughs> Just imagine walking in the gym, you got to guard him. Yeah, but you, you know, know who's eyeballing him, though, right? But for the Kardashians, and that could be trouble. <laughs> oh, man, you know, no, that's not going to happen. The curse yeah. of the Kardashians. No, as soon as they get involved, no, the game no, they're is not, over. They're not, they're not going to get involved. He's a married man. Don't know. No, since he says, you like TMZ. Stop starting rumors, okay? <laughs> Just like this. I'm saying, they're, I'm saying they're eyeballing them. No, no, you, 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 no, no. Look at this guy. So, so, so my thing is, is like, you say this team's going to win 44 games. You're saying they're the 15th best team in the NBA right now, you know, yeah. going into the season. That is a joke. We gotta get out to Vegas, put some money down there. Yeah, I'm. I'm you know what? I'm gonna put some money on there. They're gonna be higher than 15. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take Whisper's well, money. Yeah. Whisper, I'm gonna take your money. I need to take your money. <laughs> Whisper's making, Whisper's making all kind of money, guys. So, hey, so the, so the Sriracha team, we're all going out to Vegas. There you we're go. Using, we're using Whisper. Man, Whisper, you've been working out, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Whisper's, Whisper's is a strong over here. I'm feeling the lats over here, boy. Ooh, I'm gonna throw those on the trigger, don't hey, you? Hey, 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 that's a little bit too much. We think I'm Jeffrey Dahmer. Ooh, Come on, bro. <laughs> Wow, again, we're completely off the rails. Yes, hey, a nice uh, honor by the NBA today. They announced that the number six will be retired league-wide in honor of the great Bill Russell, who passed away recently. Of course, we talked a lot about Bill Russell's legacy in our last show, but all, you know, number six will not be worn again in the NBA. It's grandfathered in for people who are wearing it, so Alex Caruso can continue to wear number six, LeBron James, Chris Tapps, Porzingis, and some others. But, you know, this is like the honor in baseball with Jackie Robinson. Nobody can wear 42. Too, and now that for the great Bill Russell, number six, retired permanently. That is a awesome, awesome thing the NBA did. I mean, just getting out in front of it and just going ahead and saying, this is what we're going to do. And um, <clears throat> it's, it's amazing because not only was he one of the most winningest players of all time, you know, Michael Jordan will go down as the greatest player, but he's the greatest team player, the greatest winner. And not only did he win as a player, he won as a coach. And then all the things that he had to endure – you know, playing in Boston, you know, when during a time where there was racism in Boston and the players were treated a certain way, you know, they cheer for them at night when they're winning for the Celtics, but then when they're outside going to dinner, they're getting booed and getting called the N-word. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's what he had to endure. And to go, you know, be going up in the civil rights and being one of the, the athletes along with Jim Brown, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Muhammad Ali, guys who stood up for what was right. And he put his life on the line, not just his career, he put his life on the line because mm -hmm. you can only imagine, you know, what he had to endure, the threats that those guys had to face every single mm -hmm. night. And they didn't have security. They didn't have it was just them, you know. So um, that's a great honor for, for, for Bill Russell and, and a well-deserved honor. Yeah. So number six, after the current guys who are wearing it, retired, will not be worn again in the NBA as a tribute to the great Bill Russell. Twitch chat continuing. Our friend Pete, the sign god, is aboard. Oh, yeah. He said, I want, I want to say a special, special shout out to Pete. He says, I uh, have Tristan tell him what happens when you date a Kardashian. Tristan you know, Thompson. You know what, Pete? That's uncalled for. Okay. <laughs> but he's right. Pull, he's up, right. Pull, pull up the punches, the galata. Come and Nick, Nick Bianchi says the beers go straight to the biceps. So yeah. He, he knows okay. that your weight training method. That's how, that's how you pump it up. But I'm telling you. I'm telling y'all. Hey, hey, man. Y'all, I'm telling y'all. Hey, Whispers feels like. Like mahogany wood over here. Like, you, like, you, you like gladiator <laughs> movies, Tim? Yeah. Hey. Have you ever been I'm in a Turkish prison? Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's in a Turkish prison. Get, oh, my God. It's got a little too touchy feely yeah, here. I'd give you that. A grown man naked. <laughs> That's the hey, third line. Hey, <laughs> listen. Go, hey, go to Lifetime Fitness, baby. You see it every day. It's like a sitcom. Man code violation. Oh, man code go. violation. Hey, put a towel on, buddy. Put a towel on. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. Don't use a blow dryer in the grapefruits. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, excuse me. Where's your where's your bench at? Is it necessary that you, like, bend over in my face when I'm standing right here? Man code violation. <laughs> slap, just slap him on the ass with a card. Shapow. There you go, buddy. Get out of here. See Francisco over there? He's like, I've seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it in my room. Oh, don't go back. Oh, don't go back to that. Oh, 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 oh. scowl on his face. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Hey, Cisco got a haircut, what? ladies and gentlemen. He got a haircut. He got it, he got it faded up nice over there. And uh, we we changed our we changed our studio around a lot yeah. uh, lately. I mean, we now we look like we got DJs all in here now, ladies and gentlemen. Our crew has done a great job. The Sriracha crew, as I call them. Look at this. <laughs> look at everybody's moving around. Look at this. Look look there they are right there. Yeah, hey, and that's Maddie. dangerous D right there. And that's Cisco. And, and that's Nikki Knuckles. <laughs> and then we have our producer over here, the beautiful Maddie. She's uh, filing a lawsuit for all these uh, sexual comments that Tim makes. This is she happens to be uh, his niece. Yes, yes, yes. I'm throwing that out there. That's a, that's a badge yeah, of honor. A, and yeah. you know what? And she and her side of the family got the beauty. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Now Tim's daughter. Tim's daughter is, is pretty too. She, she's a very talented girl. When is she gonna sing for us? She's supposed to, she was supposed to be her like what her tool time girl or whatever. Yeah, she was supposed to be the tool yeah, time. Yeah, that kind of fell that, apart. Whatever that, Maddie. Yeah, she she said she don't work for free. 
And she well, don't she's want, a she, smart hey, lady. Yeah. She said she don't want no damn hot sauce either. So <laughs> we couldn't offer hot sauce. Again. So Tim said, hey, we can give, you, we can give you some beer. Hey, here's what we can do for her. When yeah. it comes to insurance for your Ooh. auto, home, and business, make sure you contact the king of insurance, our guy, Nationwide Agent Jeff Vukovic. You can find him at jeffvuk.com. That's Jeff, V-U-K.com. So, you know, if your daughter doesn't want a hot sauce, Timmy, maybe uh, we can uh, yes. get her together with Jeff Vukovic and uh, get some insurance for her. That's true. Everybody Ooh, needs insurance. Your auto, everybody. home, and business. You need to indemnify yourself. Yes, yes. Everybody needs insurance. Especially when it comes with a with a great song attached. Oh, yes. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, nationwide <laughs> is on your side, baby. Wow. Stacy, in great Tim. form today. I was wearing corduroys. Hey, hey listen. <laughs> Timmy's nipples are hard. Wait, go. Oh, no. Wow. We're, we're going to try to get this thing back on the rails and uh, continue hey, on. Down, calm down, the big guy. Episode 92 Woo. of Give Me the Hot Sauce calm rolls down, big on. Woo. Episode 92 of Give Me the Hot Sauce rolls on. We would like to welcome in a very special guest. He is Sir Michael Rocks. He is a rapper, songwriter, producer, Chicago area native. Welcome to the show. I guess first off, uh, how did you and Stacy get to know each other? Oh man, Stacy, you want you want me to give him the uh, give him the deal <laughs> from the, the the source? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh man, so. Uh... This past weekend, uh, I was hosting a music festival, hosting a music festival out in San Francisco uh, called Outside Lands. They had Post Malone as a headliner, SZA, Green Day, Weezer, a a crazy festival. Um, So we were hosting that on behalf of Twitch, you know, um, all weekend long. We're doing interviews, all this good stuff. And uh, on the production team, I make friends with an old gentleman named Jr. Man, an old gentleman <laughs> named Jr. We we hit it off pretty fast, man. He's a good guy, and we got to talking, and we started talking about Chicago and the city. And you know, he does uh he does production, you know, on uh, a lot of a lot of NBA games and stuff. He's done baseball games, and you know, we get to talking about sports and Chicago sports. He's like, you know, Stacy King. I'm like, of course I know who that is, man. He's like, no, do you know him? I'm like, no, I don't know him. I know who that is. Like, yeah, I grew up. I grew up on Stacey King. He's like, oh, man, I'll, I'll put you guys in contact as soon as I get back home. Uh, I'll, I'll give him your number. And then, uh, you know, we, we flew out that day. I didn't think nothing of it. About an hour later, I get a phone call. And I hear, hey, man, what's up? It's Stacey King, man. What's going on, baby? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell, man? What's going on, Stacey? So uh, shout out to JR for, for linking us up uh, over the past weekend, man. Uh, of course, you know, I've, I've been a, a huge fan of Stacey since I was a little kid, man. You know the whole spiel. Life happens fast, right? Yeah, it does. You know, you, gotta, you know. I mean, uh, Jr. gave me a call. I was I was doing uh, therapy, and he called me up, and he's like, "Hey, man, I got. I'm gonna link you up with someone that's from Chicago. He's a big fan, big fan of the Bulls, big fan of yours. And um, you ever heard of the Cool Kids? I go, Yeah, I've heard of the Cool Kids. Yeah, my my kids know them, and you know, I listen to some music too. And uh, he's like, oh, you know, uh, Sir Michael Rocks. You know, he's a big Stacey King fan. Da da da. And uh, I think he'd be great for the show. So Jr. was working, working behind the scenes, getting guests for me. On <laughs> there you go. So and we had Jr. Right. We had <laughs> yeah, we had Jr. on here uh, early in the season. We had Jr. on early, but uh, yeah, he hooked me up, and he's one of the best production guys in the NBA. Like, like when we go oh, to yeah. LA, man. Like, I mean, man, we had we had some technical difficulties because we had the back to back games with the Lakers and the Clippers, and so we had some technical difficulties. Okay, mm-hmm. and this dude, like, I didn't even think we was gonna get on the air. Like I didn't think we were gonna get on air, so he he worked his magic, man. Got some wires tipped up, and changed some things, and all of a sudden we made the deadline. Right when we were getting ready to do the open, we got on, and that most places would not have been able to do that. We might not have <laughs> got on, but that dude is a pro. He's a great dude, man, and I really appreciate him hooking us up. Yeah, well, Twitch chat is uh, yeah, welcoming yeah, in yeah, as well. Uh, one one of our guys, Mahogany Woods Poppy, says he saw you at Reggie's back in the day. Remember performing at Reggie's? Oh, yeah. Yep, so, yep, yep. Reggie's Rock Club uh, down there on State Street, man. We did some crazy shows there. So he, <laughs> he, he ain't lying. He ain't lying. <laughs> talk, talk, a little bit, talk a little bit about growing up in Chicago and, and who, was your, who influenced you and your style of, 
of how you deliver. It, it sounds like the Neptunes, like you guys, you got some of that Neptunes clips type stuff going on. Is that some of the people that like really mm -hmm. some slick Rick? Okay, man, if you interrupt me one more day, oh, yeah. time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw punch you, okay? Seriously. Like, when I'm over here asking our guests a question, you stop interfering. You get your chance. You get your chance when it's your chance. I thought I was helping. Oh, my God. Go go ahead. Go ahead, Mikey Rock. Go ahead. Don't listen to this fool. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you, you absolutely, you're absolutely right, man. Um, we definitely, uh, we definitely grew up being influenced by, you know, Neptunes and Pharrell, the clips and all that stuff um, for the sound that we are, you know, that we've been known for producing. And also, you know, I really did grow up on a lot of Chicago hip hop. Honestly, man, I grew up on a lot of Twister, Crucial Conflict, yes. Do or, Do or Die, uh, even Psychodrama and stuff, man. Uh, of course, Lupe and Kanye, that came a little later, but you know, I really grew up on, on Chicago rap for the most part, man. And as I grew up, you know, we obviously started finding other sounds, but like, that's how I shaped my, my, my writing cadence. That's how I shaped who I am as a writer, you know, just growing up listening to Twister and, and Crucial Conflict and Cap One and Do or Die and all of that stuff. Uh, that really uh, put the battery in my back because, you know, growing up with an older brother and an older sister, I'm the youngest of three. Um, that's all they was playing. And, you know, when you're the youngest, you're going to listen to what your big brother and sister doing and, yeah. you know, what your older cousins are doing. And that's, what's, that's what was always, you know, on the airwaves when I was around them, you know. So it played a real big part in developing me as a writer, developing my style and developing, you know, just my, 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 my foundation as a rapper pretty much. Um, and, of course, you know, we, we grew and were able to branch out and find different sounds around the world that, that interested us and we incorporated all of those into our music as well but i would say that chicago rap uh is the the biggest foundation of, of what really raised me you were just a, a young boy when uh, stacy was winning championships with the bulls i, I imagine you caught the second three peter had a, a better appreciation for it what are your memories of uh, watching oh, the bulls man. growing up Oh man, I, I got I got a lot, man. I come from a diehard Bulls household, man. So of course I, I grew up watching Stacy and the Bulls. Um, I actually am in I'm in the the Last Dance Michael Jordan documentary. Nice. I'm in there at about I'm probably like six, seven years old or something. I'm at the Grant Park uh, the Grant Park celebration, <laughs> and then the the camera is like panning through the crowd. And then at one moment, they stopped on me and my little big head. I had a little <laughs> ball fade back then, a little bean head, you know. They stopped the camera on me. I'm sitting there holding up a sign, looking confused. Uh, they froze it on me for a second, and I got all type of people sending me tweets and text messages like, man, you know, you on the, you look like you on the Michael Jordan documentary. You know, I'm like, hell no, I didn't know I was on there. So I, uh, I, go and, uh, I go and check it out and freeze frame it. I'm like, oh, no, they really got me out there when we went to the uh, the Bulls parade. Uh, I had to be about seven, eight years old, man. Me and my me and my older sister went there. So my Bulls history, it, it runs deep. It runs deep, man. <laughs> That's awesome. So when you know you 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 have your own style, you have your own cadence, and you know Chicago kind of bumped into when you go back and you talk about Crucial Conflict, Twister, then it evolved into drill rap. Like you know now it's a totally different mm -hmm. different you know style of music that has come out. Um, how hard has it been for you to keep what you do? Because a lot of times you know like you saw MC Hammer. Back in the day, he went from, you know, being a, one of his, the way he had his style that he wanted to be gangster rap. But you guys haven't changed. Right. You haven't changed who you are. You stay true to who you are, and your fan base really shows that. Mm hmm Man, I, I feel like a lot of that, a lot of that comes from growing up how I grew up, too. Um, how I grew up, it was always gangsters. It was always, you know, it was always every type of person you could pretty much see we saw them you know we saw the good we saw the bad it was always gangsters it was always like people who was in the streets all that type of stuff growing up and of course that was heavy in rap but where you know where, where, where the difference was with us is we found that everybody who was either in the streets or you know doing what they was doing they always had respect for us because we didn't try to be them because we didn't try to act like something that we weren't. We tried to, we just wanted to be ourselves and make the music that we wanted to make. And 
that all the gangsters loved me. All the gangsters and all everybody in the streets, they always loved our stuff. They always respected us because we never tried to be nothing that we weren't. We never really tried to, you know, emulate a sound or emulate a message that wasn't true to us. And honestly, I think that, you know, just by sticking to our guns and sticking, you know, sticking to our roots like that, it allowed us to have this type of longevity. It allowed us to really transcend past all of these different trends that music has gone through and Chicago music specifically has gone through. We are able to kind of step over that by just creating something unique and being ourselves and just sticking to that, man. And I think that everybody, every dog has his day. Sometimes your sound or your style, that's not the, that's not the number one sound of the day. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got to wait until the wave dies down and something else comes up and then maybe you'll be, you know, maybe it's your turn to, you know, have your sound be the number one sound out there. So we just always stay patient and stay true to ourselves and, you know, just work, just keep working, keep our heads down and keep working and don't worry about what everybody else is doing. And that got us a lot of respect, especially here in the city. Cause you know how Chicago is, man. You can't, you can't be fake out here. You can't, no. you can't get caught up telling lies and being a, a, a phony rapper or something or acting like something you're not because somebody going to call you out. This is a city of real people. Chicago is a real city. Like we don't play that. So if you get caught, you know, talking that stuff that you don't really do or acting like something you really not, somebody going to call you out and catch you up on that. So we just decided it's, it's safer to just be ourselves and stick to what we know. When you're touring, obviously people know that uh, you're from the Chicago area, but are people surprised to find out that you were born in the suburbs and maybe weren't uh, weren't actually growing up in the, in the mean streets on the south side or the west side? Man, Chicago is funny in the way that, like, I've been to all over the world. I've been to different cities in the U.S., of course, and all around. And what I notice about Chicago that's really different is we got our we got our city, and then we got these outer lying like little suburb pockets either from the west or the south or the north side whatever and it's like the closer or further you get from the original point of the city it's the the bigger the difference of like the culture is you know and i'm from like harvey Matson, tinley park all south suburbs area like that and i have a lot of family that was in the city i got a lot of family that was you know even up north and stuff so we always were, you know, uh, we were always commuting back and forth through these places all the time. So I spent a lot of time in the city all the time with family. Obviously, that's where all of the, the big bulls events would take place is always in the city. So I spent a lot of time out there. And beyond just like, the you know, the, the location of where we were is pretty, it was a lot of similarities there, you know. And I go to other cities and their suburbs are very much different from their main cities you know chicago has a lot of similarities in their suburbs to their city obviously it's different you know the closer you get to the city but they're not that uh it's not that crazy of a separation out here in chicago and i don't see that in a lot of other cities like i think that when i was uh i think we were probably in grade school still when they had moved everybody out from like the projects in the city the cabrini greens housing projects and all of those other uh, public housing developments they had and stuff. And they started tearing all those down. All those people moved out to where I was as a kid. So I saw my neighborhood start to really change, you know, as I was, uh, you know, in middle school and junior high and all that. Um, when everybody from the city, they kind of had a mass exodus to the south suburbs. And I saw my suburb really change and become a lot, you know, a lot more, a lot more Chicago-esque. It, it, it had a lot more of those elements and a lot more of those like people and a lot more of that culture was starting to come into where I was growing up at. So it was just interesting to see, man. I didn't, I didn't really, uh, I didn't really get a chance to see that in a lot of other cities because the the way that they had that mass exodus in Chicago in the '90s and early 2000s, uh, that was unprecedented, really. You know, they moved an entire an entire city of people and spread them out all mm -hmm. over the place, yeah. you know, all over the different suburbs. And my suburb was one of the ones that, you know, most people from the city went to. So we started seeing new businesses pop up, different new, new businesses from people that were in the city. We started seeing new, you know, obviously new kids at the school all the time. There's new, uh, new police, new everything around there, you know? So I got a lot of that. Uh, I got a lot of Chicago influence and flavor just from, you know, that big exodus of people 
that came in the 90s and the early 2000s. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, people who come to Chicago and they're like, oh, okay, so you're from out there, but this is Chicago right here, they would have to experience, like, that pipeline between the suburbs and the city to really understand, like, what that connection really is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I, I really, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed growing up where I grew up at. Um, I really enjoyed being able to access Chicago, how I was able to access it as a kid. We would hop on the Metra and go to the Taste of Chicago. We would go to the Bulls games. We would just be out hanging out down on State Street uh, by the, you know, Columbia College and all that stuff. So it was really, uh, it was really cool to be able to like live both of those worlds, live in the suburbs and be able to, you know, make my way to the city whenever we wanted to and kind of get an experience to that, taste that, and then, you know, go back home at the end of the day and do it all over again some other time. You know, we talk about when we have, you know, guys from Chicago, we talk about, you know, how you guys are role models. You know, a lot of times, you know, the athletes, you know, used to be the role models. You know, everybody wanted to be Michael Jordan. Everybody wanted to be, you know, Scottie Pippen or Magic, you know. But now, realistically, mm -hmm. the kids want to grow up to be rappers. They want to grow up to be you guys because that's more of an attainable goal. It, you, these kids are not going to grow up to be 6'9", 6'10", you know, but they can be, you know, 5'9", mm -hmm. 5'10", five, five, and be able to flow and be able to, to be able to spit a verse out and have bars. So that goal is more attainable. Talk a little bit about you growing up and how, you know, how – your life was cultivated into music. I mean, were there, there were teachers, were there people that took interest in you and said, hey, look, this kid's got some talent. You know, let's let's keep him on the right track, not let him get off the right track. Like your family. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, music has always been huge in my life since I was a kid. My parents were a little younger, a little bit younger than most of my friends' parents and, you know, people in the neighborhood. So my parents, while... Everybody else's mom and dad was, you know, they was listening to like Luther, or Vandross, and listening to R and B, listening to gospel and old soul, and you know, Al Green and kind of stuff like that. My parents was listening to rap, you know, when I was a little kid. My parents was listening to Slick Rick, Nas, Tupac, Twista, all of that stuff. So I grew up in a household that was already very like hip hop and rap focused, like. You know, um, I remember going over a lot of my friends' houses and some of their parents didn't even let them, like, listen to rap at that point. It was still pretty frowned upon in the 90s like that, especially for kids. You know, they weren't letting them listen to it like that. Um, but my household was different. We, we kind of grew up inside of, you know, rap. And uh, I had a cousin that came to visit us for a summer one time, and this is how it all pretty much got started. He brought over a little karaoke machine radio thing with a microphone on it and tape deck and you can like record yourself into this karaoke machine and he brought over that and a bunch of Tupac instrumental beats you know and him and my older sister they would be like just playing around freestyling and rapping into the mic doing little stupid songs and you know just clowning and I thought it was really cool I was probably like you know six seven or something maybe eight years old, I thought it was cool. I was like, man, I want to do that too. And they wouldn't let me, uh, they wouldn't let me do it with him. Cause you know, the little brother annoying, he, ain't, he can't do what we doing, you know, <laughs> going somewhere, go find your, go find your friends or something, you know? So uh, while they, they went outside and left for a while, I got on the karaoke machine and I started recording my own little stuff. I knew how to press record and stop and <laughs> figured it out. I ended up, you know, recording my own little raps and stuff. I'm like, I'm cussing, I'm doing all <laughs> type of stuff that I shouldn't have been doing, man. Some stuff I couldn't even let my mom, I couldn't even let my mom hear it. I was scared to let her hear it because I was like, I'm gonna get in trouble, I'm cussing over here. But, you know, I was just trying to emulate, I was trying to emulate the rappers that I grew up listening to and the rappers that I was hearing as a kid. So I uh, started recording that stuff and eventually they find it. Uh, my cousin and my older, my older sister, they found it and they said, they was like, oh, we, we about to tell mom you was on here cussing. You was on here rapping and cussing and doing all this stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 don't tell her, don't tell her, don't tell her. And then my cousin, he was like, no, actually, man, it was, it was actually not that bad. You're actually all right at it. You should try to like, you should try to write some stuff down. You know, let's let's write some stuff out and see if you can write a song or something. So that's where it kind of all started from there. Uh, he didn't, he ain't snitch on me. And I was like, okay, just teach me how to write, you know. And after that, I just started learning how to write songs and, learning what my learning what my angle was learning what I wanted to rap about or how I wanted to rap what, what what the flow was and it just gave me a confidence to 
really like step into my own. I started figuring out how I wanted to dress. I started figuring out the clothes I wanted to buy. And that was a big component too growing up, you know, in Chicago is dressing. You know, you gotta have you gotta have some gear on because if not, they're gonna roast you and they're gonna they ain't gonna yeah. let you see the end of it, man. It's it's a it's a cold city for that, man. You can't <laughs> not be fresh in Chicago. So um yeah, it it all really just started there by you know, my sister and my older cousin really just uh, putting that battery in my back and telling me, like, no, you're actually all right. You're kind of good. Like, don't worry about it, man. Like, keep keep trying it out. And from there, I uh, joined, like, little rap groups with my friends. And we just continued to elevate. We were building our own studios at, like, probably 12 years old. We was taking, like, the the regular performance mics, like, that you see, like, like, you, like your, your co-host has over here. We would take, like, those mics and put some uh, pantyhose over it to make the little pop filter, you know? So when you say your P words, we would like hang them up with a hanger and like put the microphone in the closet. We just tried to like create a studio however we could. We, we used our little computers and all of that. So we were pretty, uh, we, we had a lot of ingenuity as kids. I'll say that, man, because we rigged up some some real ghetto contraptions to uh, try to record <laughs> some songs. Awesome. And, you know, from there, it just kept it just kept elevating, man. And I really had a passion for learning how to record. And my mom ended up sending me to uh, she ended up sending me to a sound engineering school when I was like seventeen. And I learned how to you know really engineer and record records. And I had my own studio in my house at the time, so I was recording everybody at my high school. I was recording all the neighborhood rappers and everything, and doing my own stuff at the same time, making beats, recording my own raps. And it just kind of all kept evolving into a point where I knew what I was doing. And at that point, um, I met my partner and the cool kids, Chuck, on my last year of high school. And we met up and we started the group and history from there. We started going on tours. Uh, we were on Jimmy uh, Jimmy Kimmel show. We did shows for Obama. We, you know, it, it all just kind of started to to ascend from that point on. You know, with all the great musical options in Chicago, you won't believe this. Uh, the third guy in our podcast over here, Timmy Whispers, he's going to see a Fleetwood Mac cover band tonight. So, oh, I mean, man. he's got no taste at all yes. in music. But, no. but, he, but he does He does want to yeah, ask you a question. Yeah. 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 He's going to go, see, he's gonna go see Fleetwood Mick. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The, the Fleetwood Mac. The, the, the yeah. Fleetwood yeah. Mac Matthew. Fleetwood Matthew or something. Hey, these are, these Fleetwood are the things. Macaroni. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. These are the things we do for our wives. He's going, you know what I mean? he's going to... I didn't buy the see, tickets. Uh, Stevie, Stevie Six. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's see? right. Like see? That. see? <laughs> he knows. He knows. <laughs> like Leslie Ruckingham's. <laughs> yeah, Leslie Ruckingham. <laughs> so, so, hey, uh, can you explain this lyric? My eyesight is so good I can see a fart. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's literal right there, man. I, I, I feel like sometimes... You know, I, I got the gift. I got the gift. I can see it before it happens. And you know, usually we only uh we only know somebody farted because we smell it, you know. But yeah. I, on the other hand, I possess <laughs> a special set of skills. I can see it coming out your pants before it even lands, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a great skill. Hey, and if I was uh if I was gonna give you a uh, a good spit. Here, this is this is why. I think oh, oh, oh come God. on now, this this come on now. First of all, first of all, he messed it all up. If I was gonna give you a good spit, like <laughs> hey, 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 I'm trying to help you out. No, you, you already no, lost him. You already lost him. Tim. What you just said, I got some, oh, I, I, I got some look, bars. Hey. All right, give him a I got break, some man. bars. Give him a break. Give him I, a I break, never man. get a break. I get three. Hey, I got you, Tim. Leave him alone. I get three punch four four times a show. Why don't you do it as Christopher Walken? Yeah, probably better. Oh, you know what? You might have something. Yeah, yeah let's try that. <laughs> All right. There we go. So, so th this would be the line. It's raining titties, and you caught a dick. <laughs> we just lost 18 sponsors. We, oh, he got the show canceled. Hey, oh, Mike, you got the show canceled. Hey, hey, don't, oh. you, hey don't you think you could build hey. on that? I think that's something. It wasn't me. I didn't, that was Tim. All right, go ahead, Tim. Tim, go ahead, go ahead. Finish it. Finish it up, man. No, that, that was it. It's raining titties. That's all you. Did. That's all you that's got. That's all you came that's, up with. No, I, I think we can build on that rhyme. though. That didn't even rhyme. I think that'd be the name of a song. <laughs> exactly. It didn't even rhyme. Oh, you don't want to hear the second I line. I thought you had a whole verse or something, man. No, we just lost a bunch of sponsors. I can't do the second <laughs> line. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. We're not trying to get you shut down in no. here. No. All right, let's, no. let's, let's, yeah, this is what we have to deal no with him. Raps. We normally almost got throat punched again. Yeah, we normally have like a button to cut him off when he's doing something crazy like this, and uh, it's not working mm. right now. Hey, hey what, <laughs> yeah. what, what, what beer are you drinking? I'm a, I'm a beer guy. Uh, this is a Two Hearted Ale. Oh, nice. IPA. Oh, great choice. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one with the fish, the fish on the can. Oh, yeah. That one right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, 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 tell us about the tour that's coming up, and uh, where can uh, everybody get a chance to see you in Chicago? Because you kick off in Chicago first, right? Yep, yep, yep. We are about to kick off our uh, Coolest tour starting September twenty fourth. It's going to be at uh, Talia Hall, Talia Hall out here in Chicago. That's where we're going to kick it off at. It's going to be a little unconventional type of type of tour we're doing. So how we're setting it up is my partner, uh, Chuck and the Cool Kids, he's half rapper, half chef, man. And Stacy, I actually got to get you some of... Uh, Get you some of his hot sauce too. He got oh, a whole hot sauce oh, collection too. So oh, y'all need nice. to do a, do a little oh, trade. We gonna send you it's some, funny, baby. Oh yeah. It's actually we actually the, the uh, hot sauce is actually gonna be um, a VIP gift for everybody that comes to our show with VIP tickets. So you're gonna get a box to the hot sauce, cookbook, all that stuff. Oh, so I I hook you up, Stacy, so y'all can do a little. He's spot. a real chef. That'd be cool. Yo, he's a real chef. You know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he's, I, he's thought, been, you, I thought you was. I, th- I thought you was talking about he's a chef with the with the turntables and stuff. I like okay. Oh uh, no, he, he's chef with that. He's chef in that kitchen, man, <laughs> and on that grill. That man be going crazy. Uh, <laughs> but so so how the uh, how the tour is gonna is gonna be laid out is he's going to uh, have a curated menu uh, for like uh, a very nice a nice dinner at the venue before all of the concert stuff kicks off. So if you got the VIP tickets, you'll come in. You'll eat dinner with us. It'll be a bunch of other, you know, a bunch of other VIPs there. You'll get to do a meet and greet. Uh, you'll get to see uh, new merchandise or uh, get gifted for free uh, hot sauce and shirts and all of that cool stuff. And then after that, uh, me and our DJ, we have uh, we got a Twitch podcast as well where we do like news and just funny pop culture stuff. And we make music as well on there. So we'll be doing a live version of our podcast at the uh, at the venue as well while you're having your dinner, eating your dinner, have some drinks and all that. I'll have a curated menu with cocktails on there. So you'll be able to watch us, catch a couple laughs and stuff while we do the do the podcast. And after that, we'll move into the uh, concert venue where we'll have like a guest comedian uh, that'll be doing a set for a minute. And then after that, we'll do the Cool Kids concert where we'll do some of the songs from the new album, Close it out like that, and bam, we had a night. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, we got to yeah. Go so there's gonna be a whole, a whole experience there, guys. tonight. We really wanna, yeah. Y'all gotta come. Road y'all trip. Gotta come through, road man. trip. Road trip. What's your podcast called so the folks can find it? It's called Mystery School US. Okay. Mystery School US on Twitch. All right. Oh, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, yeah, man. It's it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun show, man. It's gonna be really fun. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have comedians and stuff. We're gonna have the dinner drinks, all of that. We wanted it to be more than just come to a concert and throw your hands in the air and people spill beer all over your shoes, you know? We yeah. wanted it to be something something a little more grown and sexy, you know? Because I feel like we got, a, we got a fan base where they would appreciate, you know, they would appreciate something nice like that. So we really yeah. want to make everybody have a good time and, you know, pack everybody into a, a comfortable space and feed you and give you an experience, you know, before the show. So it's not just a concert. Well, I just want to throw this out there, you know, on my playlist, you know, I've got you on my playlist, Black Mags on my, my playlist, and then Seven oh, Avarexes, yeah. Seven Avarexes is uh, on repeat, I was blasting that today, Let's I, go. Was, I was blasting that as I was coming from the Bulls uh, uh, Advocate Center today when I was working out over there, so I just want to throw that out there, uh, That's that Seven Avarexes is nice, it's nice. Thank you. Nice. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's off the new album, that's off the new album, so we're going to be performing all of that stuff at the show. Oh. And Timmy just slinked out. He embarrassed himself. Yeah, he embarrassed so, uh, himself. He's got to go go check out the Fleetwood Max it's, or it's whatever he's right, watching. Tim. The, yeah. the, the Fleetwood, right, Fleetwood, Fleetwood Max. <laughs> Fleetwood Max tonight. And, and pe- people, people are enjoying. See people are enjoying. <laughs> yeah, they're enjoying the show on the Twitch, Mikey. And uh, you know, one of them said that we. One of our sponsors is Angel Water. He said after Timmy's rap, it's not going to be called Demon Water. So. <laughs> oh, he, he definitely got on Demon Time with that version yeah. that spit right there. Yeah, yeah, he's. he's I didn't he, know Tim had it in him like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you didn't hear the whole verse though. Yeah, there's there a whole bunch more he read. He wrote down on there, and I didn't even want to. I just said, don't do it. Hey, a lot of people have yeah. questions. They're wondering uh, who. 
who was a rapper that you met that maybe you were kind of in awe of, somebody you looked up to that you got to either perform, share the stage with or just watch? Oh, man, it's got to be Jay-Z. Jay-Z definitely is, uh, he's got an aura about him. It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's large, man. It's a larger than life aura about him. And he don't even really say much. So we're on tour in uh, Finland and Europe over there overseas mm -hmm. with Jay-Z during the, uh, I think he was doing like the American Gangster Tour when, you know, when he made the soundtrack for the movie and all of that stuff. Uh, we were over there touring with him. We're in Finland. <clears throat> Me and uh, Chuck, my partner, we dead tired, man. We backstage uh, in the catering area where they serve all the food at. We dead tired because we did like seven cities before that. We ain't sleeping. We up all night. So we decided to catch a little nap, you know, uh, in the catering area on the table. So we just <laughs> both laid down sleep. And as I'm, you know, as I'm dreaming, knocked out, I hear a little knock, knock, knock on the table. And then I'm like, who the hell is this? I wake up and then it's Jay-Z sitting there. And he's like, oh, he's like, y'all tired already? He said, y'all tired already, man? Y'all younger than me. How y'all tired out already, man? I'm the old man. Y'all shouldn't be tired. I'm tired. And then we're like, no, no, we good. We good, man. And he trying to, try to straighten up. I'm wiping the coal out my eye. I'm like, man, what's up, ho? What's going on, man? Uh, shake his hand and, you know, talk to him for a minute, man. He, you know, really thanked us for uh, coming out with him and talked to us about old stories and stuff, uh, Memphis Bleak, all type of stuff, man. And uh, he just has a very, uh, got a very welcoming aura to him, man. Like, he's a cool dude that's really, he's easy to talk to. He doesn't make you feel like, you know, uh, doesn't make you feel like intimidated or doesn't make you feel like he's uh, better than you or something like that. Like, he's a, he's a pre pretty chill down to earth dude, especially to be who he is, man. And that was just really crazy to me to be able to like share those type of stories and conversations with him, man. And he really embraced us and showed us a lot of love, man. And if you ever get the chance to shake Jay-Z's hands, I'm telling you now, softest hands that you will ever, I got soft <laughs> hands, man. Like my hands ain't rough by any means. I got pretty soft hands. Jay-Z hands, it's like, did he sleep with a glove on and moisturize every night or something, man? Or I don't know, but. Just a, a, a legendary <laughs> dude with a very, very soft handshake, man. Very soft well, hands, man. I wish I could say the same thing about Michael Jackson. I say, I say, I <laughs> Michael Jackson hand. It's like shaking somebody's foot. I like, man, you need to put a sock what? on me, bud. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, because he was like, my, my, uh, Michael, Michael Jackson hand was cold and it was just hard. Yeah. Like I was just like, it was like, like with a zombie. Wow. Seriously, it was like I never done nothing <laughs> like that before. That's that. I was scarred from that meeting. Things you find with out the, on the podcast you, that you had no idea about. Yeah. He, with he, the, he hit you with the thriller. He hit you with the thriller handshake, huh? <laughs> I'm just, hey, hey, I, I'm not lying. When I when I when I shook I shook his hand, I was like, is this dude alive? Like, <laughs> <laughs> seriously. Come on, man. I'm Quit playing you, with man. Michael like that, yeah. man. Yeah, he, I'm I'm just being honest. It was a hard hand. It was a hard hand. My dad had hard hands. I can I could believe it though. My dad, I can believe my dad it though, had man. hard hands. You know, like because like, mm -hmm. you know the calluses, you know, working and everything. Like my dad, like my dad oh, hit yeah. me in the back of the neck. I had to check for blood. That's how hard his hands was. I'm just, <laughs> you know, but Michael see if he had a, a fracture yeah. or something back there. <laughs> but see, but you, but Michael always wore those little tape things on his finger, and you know, he was always snapping and dancing. So you could you could right. you could probably see why his hands were not moisturized, like Jay. Right? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah, Jay Z. That's definitely uh, <laughs> that's definitely one of the more surreal rapper meetings that I had before. So, do you do you do you enjoy? Because it seems like you enjoy both. If you had to pick a, pick and choose, they said you you can only do one. Would you rather be a producer, or would you rather be the entertainer, the rapper? You can only do one. Mm. And either one, I could do it really well. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh. Knowing what I know now, I probably say I probably say a producer. I probably say a producer mainly. I say that because a producer, you have a lot of options. All right, you have a lot of options after like your initial like okay, you got hot period with a rapper. Once you uh, kind of you know once once you're like okay, you hit your like all right, we got really hot and talk of the town period, and then things kind of level out after that, it's really up to you to figure out how you want to keep the train moving forward because it doesn't it doesn't pull itself at that point. Like, you're not just riding off of being hot no more. Now you got to start using your brain. You got to start getting creative and figuring out 
you know, ways to stay relevant, ways to stay in the conversation, you know, and yeah. as a producer, I think that they have this, uh, they have this entry point of if you get hot and you get, you know, to a certain level of being a producer, you can start to produce for so many other things and you can even play the background and not have to be the front man and not have to be the guy on screen and hustling and bustling to, to, to make your money. You can be producing for movies. You can get into scoring movies and TV shows. You can get into, you know, working with fashion designers and all this stuff on their music. And it's just a lot of variety of options for a producer outside of just their face. With a rapper, it's like you rely so much on your face. Once your face gets, you know, or once you're, once people are tired of your face or they've seen it and it ain't the, the face of the week no more then it's, it's a little harder, you know? So I think that being a producer, it just, it just leaves you with a lot more options. If you, if you willing to use your brain and you're willing to, you know, get creative with it, you got a lot more options for, for longevity there. I feel like, so I'll have to say producer for that answer. Well, you've certainly made the best of both worlds. You've uh, achieved enormous success at a very young age. One of Chicago area's very own Sir Michael Rock. Thank, thank you so much for joining us here on Gimme the Hot Sauce. Best of luck with the upcoming tour, and thanks for putting up with our nonsense. We appreciate the, We appreciate the love. We're gonna get your address, uh, Maddie. Maddie's gonna, get you, Maddie's gonna get your address. We're gonna send you some hot sauce. Give some to Chuck too. Yeah, yeah, I gotta get I'll get you Chuck sauce too. So uh I'll talk to Maddie and, and get y'all get your info to get that sent out to y'all ASAP too. Cool, cool. Appreciate it, Mikey. Cool. Thank oh yeah, y'all tell y'all y'all tell Tim, man, stop going to those uh, <laughs> sleep sleetwood, yeah. sleetwood actual yeah. ones, man. Yeah. Tell them just buy a just buy, buy a, a real ticket, ticket or something. Don't buy just a be real going, ticket. Don't be going and seeing them That's right. cover bands, oh, man. They're stealing yeah. your money. Yeah. yeah, stealing your money. But he'll come back, <laughs> come he'll on, come man. back and say, Man, it was a great concert. They sound just like Fluid Man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Come on, man. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. All yeah. right, man. Yeah. We hear you, Tim. But thanks again for having me, guys. Man, yeah. Anytime y'all need me, I'll be here, man. I'd love to come back anytime. Oh, Thank no. you hey, so much. Don't we appreciate be afraid you of, joining us. Don't be afraid us. to make us a beat. Uh, give me the hot sauce. <laughs> I got you, man. Whatever you need. I'll cool. put it together. Cool, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, uh, Wolf. Seven Avarexes, yeah, baby. Put it together, Get the please. album, boy. Get the new album, baby. Stacey, you know what I heard? Uh, Tim stole your limousine. So why don't you tell what? the folks how they can find a, a, a ride when he's in the limousine? <laughs> You think darkness is your ally, <laughs> but you really adopted the dark. I was born in it. <laughs> he better not steal. Yeah, you can do voiceovers, he, man. He took your I ride. You got to tell it. He slinked I, I out of here and he that. took your limo. Oh, he did. No, he didn't take my limo. That yeah, was, he did. That's a serious throw punch right there for <laughs> real. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Bulls Nation. Windy City Limo provides championship service. Making a reservation is so easy, it's a slam dunk. Let Windy City break the full core pressure and traffic and get you to your destination in style like they do me every week. <laughs> contact us at 877. You notice I said contact us. Yeah. Because I'm part of Windy. Uh, 916-9300. Again, that's 847-916-9300. And tell them that Timmy Whispers... Stole my ride. Yeah, tell no, no. Tell Timmy Whispers sent you. And if you get the Timmy Whispers discount from Sleetwood Mac, <laughs> they, <laughs> you might get a discount. Get that, Just that free mention, show. The, mention the word Sleetwood Mac, America, and you may get that. You may get that discount. We're all about truth and advertising here on the show. Welcome back, episode ninety-two. Of Give me the hot sauce, and for whatever reason, Chicago sports always seems to be besieged by so much drama. Right now, it is the Chicago Bears who are going through a contract stalemate with arguably their best player, linebacker Roquan Smith, has refused to participate in practices. The Bears tried to help him out by putting him on the physically unable to perform list, which meant he could just show up for practice, really not do anything, but they weren't going to find him. Well, then Roquan escalated things by saying, I want to be traded that the Bulls or excuse me, the Bears front office did not show him the respect that he thought he deserved, that their contract offers were not up to his standard. He does not have an agent. He's negotiating for himself, which oh, is always no. a bit of a problem. And now the Bears took him off the physically unable to perform list, and Matt Eberflus at practice, where we were recording this on Thursday, Matt Eberflus said, well, you better ask him why he's not practicing, suggesting that there could be some fines coming uh, number 58's way. Stacey, first of all, not having an agent is a problem, especially when you're talking about the amounts of dollars that these guys are talking yeah, about. Yeah, and you know what? When you go in there and negotiate for yourself, I mean, the team – 
you're at the team's mercy. It gets personal. Yeah, it gets personal. Yeah. You don't. You don't. That's why you have an agent to buffer that stuff for you. This, you go in there talking to somebody, and they they tell you what you don't want to hear. Yeah, you're really not that good. You know, yeah. um, we should have drafted someone else in front of you. Uh, you don't make enough plays. You know, you got to hear this, and now it becomes personal. Whereas if you have an agent, his numbers don't lie. Like, hey, come on, I, I know the Bears are not winning games. And they need to take this into consideration, too, because he's still a young player. And this is a guy that can be a Pro Bowl player for the next five years. And so to leave – oh, okay. speak up then, boys. Well, we don't want to interrupt you. Okay, right? all right. So, you know, okay, so, you know what? You know how these guys I throw them well, Tim, are you, are you running your resignation? What's going on over there? <laughs> I'm running out uh, questions for our guests coming up. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, see now, because you know Tim won't be here. Uh, what, what is this? The fifties? Enter and yeah. sign in, please. Or? Yeah, it's, this is this is going to be horrifying. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, we're, the good thing about it, we'll be able to proofread them, <laughs> and then we'll decide if we want to answer those questions. So before you were so rudely interrupted. That's this. why yes. we're getting to Francisco. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me tell you something. If you interrupt me again, I'm gonna throw punch you. <laughs> okay. So anyway, before I was rudely interrupted by the little pink man, um, the kid is young. Yeah. You know, four years, he's put up a lot of good numbers. People can say those are inflated stats because the team was so bad. Bears have always been good defensively. You look at those stats, 14 sacks, 176 assists, 348 solo tackles. This is a guy that's been one of my starters on my fantasy, so I'm going to be disappointed if he's not out there on that field, okay, because I need to defend my fantasy title. I've won it, <laughs> I've won it seven years in a row, and it's because guys like him. But at the same time, he needs to hire an agent. He needs to go out and get someone, whether it be Lee Steinberg, someone that can go in there and say, hey, look, this guy is one of the best at his position. The numbers don't lie. He's four seasons, 61 games played. He's very durable. He's missed some games here and there, but he's been very durable. And you just can't let talented players, Mark, just walk out that are so young. Yeah, that's a future Hall of Famer. Could be if he continues on that track. There's no question he's put up the numbers, but this has gotten ugly, and if the Bears start finding him, who knows where this is going to go. But bottom line, he's got to play. In order to get a year of service, he's got to play at least six games. So at some point, he's going to have to put the helmet on and get on the field. Well, he's got to bet on himself. you got to get out there and do what you need to do, show why you're the leader of this team. Um, you know, this is a team I, I don't think anyone's given any kind of, like especially the – the national pundits. I don't think they're giving the Bears any chance to be successful this year. I'd like to see him go 500, and that would be a great start for a young quarterback. Um, but it's also going to depend on defense. You know, if their defense is not up to – I mean, it's been that's been the main reason why the Bears have been able to compete the last five years is – Okay, you know what? Dangerous D. Okay, so we got a mouth. You know, Dangerous D over there, like he's DJ, uh, you know, DJ Quick. And, he, you know, he got his headphones up on his hat and it fell off and he just interrupted me. If you interrupt me one more time, I'm, I'm going to throw punch you, okay? <laughs> you over there on the DJ turntable, man. I saw you. You, you made me stop in mid sentence. I thought you was going to fall over the table. Through the glass. Yeah. <laughs> well, you saw, if you're watching us on Twitch or watching on YouTube, uh, you saw some of the things that have happened at Bears camp. They took a flyer on Nikhil Harry, a former first-round draft pick. They thought maybe he would be the guy who would be opposite Darnell Mooney and Damn. give them another threat. Ankle surgery? Ankle surgery. He had a high ankle sprain that was so severe they have to go in and operate, and he's going to be out there saying at least oh. eight weeks. So Byron Pringle, who uh, was a guy that they brought in from Pringle the Kansas Chips. City Chiefs, he's hurt. So I don't know who they're going to oh, run out there Saturday. They man. play at noon at Soldier Field. They're only playing against uh, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. That's oh, all. Oh, man, not a way to start <laughs> off I've been running season. laps. <laughs> You've uh, been running. Hey. But we know you're well-muscled, yeah, Stacey. He's, he's, yeah, he's yeah. well-muscled over here, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know what this guy's been eating in America, but hey. <laughs> Woo, Timmy Whispers. He's like he's like that old Indian, you know, the little Indian that holds cigars when you go into a shop and it's all hard. That's yeah. It's like a wet bag of sand. <laughs> uh, thanks, I guess. Just like whispers. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie, man. Look, my gun's looking pretty good over there, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm a professional. I might be on the whispers program over there. Jeez, we're gonna have to Woo! get a full length mirror here in the walk. studio. These oh, guys can the check air. each other out. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, Biff and Buff, baby. Biff and Buff, baby. All along. <laughs> <Check mirror. laughs> oh, my God. Matt, Matty wants to tell the folks about the hot sauce and oh. how they can find the, oh. the great product that is uh, the oh. rage of America right now. It's on the hottest hot sauces That's out right. there. Okay, if you haven't bought your own bottle right now, you are missing out. Trying to score the best hot sauce in the game? Well, listen up, because we have a variety of flavors that will bring some spice into your life. That's right. Give me the hot sauce. 
has the best small batch organic sauces for your kitchen. Whether it's Chicago-style red sauce with the garlic twist, fan favorite St. Pat's Verde, which is my personal favorite, our spicy and sweet King's Q. Product placement. And our hottest of the bunch, Chicago Fire 1871. Woo! Stop by GimmeTheHotSauce.com. That's G-I-M-M-E, TheHotSauce.com. And use code KING21 to get 21% off your first order. Very well done. And you should check it out. Go to GiveMeTheHotSauce.com. Oh. We are operators are standing by, and Timmy, the hot sauce packer, will oh. personally I'll pack it up for you. Pack yeah. it up for you. Yeah. You use yeah. those muscles, yeah. Yeah. you really make sure you, you get in there nice and that, tight. That's been the program. <laughs> like his jeans. You see his jeans right now. They're nice and tight over here. Does that look good in these jeans. We've already determined he can't wear corduroys <laughs> anymore, no, so I don't no. know what that's all about. Yeah, yeah we stop uh, after What a grade. mess. Oh, my oh goodness. Oh, my God. Hey, how, how are the Oklahoma Sooners going to be uh, this year, Stace? Not too excited. Of course, the coach and the quarterback went west, young man. Um, Mark, um, I went to Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> we're at a transfer we're, portal. Yeah, we're, we're going to do pretty good. Yeah, me, wide so open. Me and, me and Coach Nick Saban, we're going to do pretty good. Let's go. Let's yeah. go, Bama. Roll Tide. Roll Tide, Tide saying, baby. Yeah. Here is the coaches' poll, oh. which just came out earlier this week. Of course, Alabama number one, Utah. followed by the Ohio State Buckeyes, Georgia, Clemson, and the Fighting Irish. Wait a minute, of Notre Dame. No, Oklahoma's Hold in it. there. They're nine, okay. baby. Okay, I take that back, America. <laughs> I'm jumping back on the Sooner Scooter, wagon. baby. I didn't know they were ninth. I yeah. thought they were out of the top ten. Yeah. Oh, baby, I'm back in there, baby, till we lose our first game. And if we lose <laughs> our first game, whoever we lose to, I might have jumped on your team. But I like to see what is Utah doing in there. Look at the Big 12, though. The Big they went 12. to the Rose Bowl last year. They got a nice squad. Big 12 is represented very well. We got Baylor there. We got Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. Won't be long. <laughs> Oklahoma's going to be in there with Alabama and, and Georgia and all those SEC Oh, the board. Super Conference. Yeah, the Super, Super Conference. Conference. Where's USC? Is USC yeah. out there? Yeah, I, I don't see yeah. uh, Lincoln Riley yeah, on Lincoln, anywhere. Lincoln, yeah, Lincoln Riley. You cheated the Sooners. <laughs> you, 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 you stiffed us. Three teams, including Notre Dame. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, you know what? I wasn't done talking my rant about Lincoln Riley. Okay? <laughs> so don't don't oh, don't, sorry. don't ever bad. don't ever interrupt me again. Okay. All right, go go on. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, it's over now. I'm done. I'm done talking about Lincoln Riley. That's it. Hey, when you hear him go, oh, you know I got him. He ain't choking on he ain't choking on a piece of gum, America. He's just got throat punch. You. That's what's going to happen to him. Or those chicken wings. <laughs> hey, that's right. We got, we got some chicken wings today, boy. Wow. They're right there. Did we, oh, they got, we got, yeah. what are they, wings stop? Right. Give me the hot sauce. No, I'm sorry. We can't, we can't give out where they're from because they're not, they're not sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just got some unnamed wings, unnamed wings. We got them from, we got them from Jewel Osco. A Acme, Acme wings. <laughs> yeah, Acme, Acme wings. Well, we're going to be enjoying some wings. Maybe mm. turn on the, uh, the Field of Dreams oh. game featuring two of the powerhouses in Major League Baseball, the Chicago Cubs and the Cincinnati Reds. I'm sure Fox Sports is really happy about well, that match. They called it the battle for the draft pick. No. That's right. <laughs> Let me tell you something. America. That's the worst game out there. I know. Because you know, last year's was know, so good. Let me tell you something. That should be a game, honestly, that the networks can change it and they can put whatever teams there's out there. Whoever the best. Yeah, they team, should be able to flex it like the NFL. Yeah, like, the, like the NFL, like the yeah. NBA. If your team's not good, it's like you know, hey, you know, sorry, sorry, Cubs and Reds, you guys <laughs> suck. Can't come out there. So this, when they come out the cornfields tonight, is it tonight? It's tonight. Yeah. yeah so when they come out the cornfields tonight, right? Who's the that? You know, no, no, they ain't going to be saying who's that. Because the ghost of Joe Jackson and the rest of them people going to snatch him back and say, get your ass back in the corn. We're going out there playing. And they're gonna, you're going to see the ghost of uh, Joe Jackson and the rest of them dudes out there playing. Yeah, it's, that's, that's a bad matchup. It should have been the Dodgers. It could have been the Braves. It could have been the New York Yankees. I mean, it could have been a ton of teams that would have been really cool to watch. Our guy Adam's not out there, is he? Adam Amin? Is he calling this? You know what? Adam, Adam is the busiest man in show business. Yeah, I think I think it's Joe Davis and uh, John Smoltz doing. Yeah, that's you know, that's, they cheat my boy Adam. He yeah. should be number one. He's field number of, one. Field of nightmares. <laughs> yeah, field of crap. <laughs> <laughs> field of bullshit. Field, well, they field probably do pie. use so, some manure and growing that uh, yeah. corn as high as they do. Yeah. It won't be as good as the White hey, Sox. You remember what happened there. last year? Tim Anderson hit that walk-off yeah, walk homer, and everybody celebrated. It was two of the best teams in the baseball last yep. year: the White Sox and the Yankees. And the White Sox have had nothing but injury problems. Tim Anderson, 
Nope. Finger injury, oh. surgery, out for six weeks, could miss the rest of the regular season. They, they lose again to the Royals. I mean, they are just in a situation where I don't know if it's going to happen this year, Stacey. Sometimes uh, it just doesn't happen. Listen, it's snowball effect. They, they miss too many guys this year with injuries. And then you lose your best player for, what, six weeks? Yeah, six oh, weeks. Man. I mean, just this is, this is pull a Tony LaRusso. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just Everybody kidding. wants to blame Tony, but know. you know he, it's he's not had. His fault. I mean, so many injuries that it's been unbelievable how many guys have been out for significant periods, and that lineup has looked nothing like what was projected at the start of the year. Look at the numbers right there: two and a half games back of the Twins, the wild card. Yeah, oh. mathematically they're still alive only because the division is so bad. You only have to get in. It yeah. is baseball. You know what? You know, hey, listen, they got Good a lot of warts. They got a lot of warts in their game. <laughs> yeah, there we go again. You know, they got medications for that, Stacy. I'm, I'm, I'm itching again, Mark. Stop it. Stop. You got me itching again. No, they they just had a really bad luck this year. Yeah. Really bad luck because they were they were a team that people picked to get to the World Series. Yeah, and, they were uh, one of the favorites in the American League. And it just you know it just didn't materialize. Just like the Cedar Sportsbook, right? Yeah, the they probably, yeah, they, yeah. The yeah, Bulls yeah. are what fifteenth and fifteenth. They were in the top four, the White Sox, to start the season. Yeah, it's a tribute to Tony. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about Aaron Judge? He's got 45 homers. Do you think uh, think he's going to pass Maris at 61 and get the Yankee record? How many games left? Uh, about 45. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Man, I'm going to tell you something. That's a big dude. No, nah, he's a big like, dude. That, 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 that looks like Casey at the bat. <laughs> Do you, you think know, he's he, 255? He, he says he's 255. Man, I'm going to tell you something. That's a I'm big. I'm 230. That, he's 270. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just oh. saying that guy's not 255. Oh, this guy. How much do you weigh? Whispers. 230. Yeah, you, you, you know what we gotta do? We gotta get whispers in the weight room at Io. See who can pump the most iron. Oh, jeez. Oh, nah, nah. Tim's got a bad wrist. I got old man strength. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hey, old man strength for real. Don't sleep. Yeah. Don't sleep. You know what it is? I think it's that great Angel Water. Tim, why don't yeah. you tell the folks about uh, Angel Water? Oh, that's. A I'm gonna idea. just pop yeah. a bottle right now. You gotta mix it in. You know, I gotta hydrate when you're drinking that beer. You got you got a show to go to that's later true. tonight. That's right. Got a Fleetwood Mac revival. That'd be fun. Oh, yeah. If you have a couple more beers, it'll be a good time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Lindsey Buckingham gets me going. <laughs> oh, God. So, listen up, Bulls Nation. <laughs> We want to Listen make water healthier Nation. for you. <laughs> hey, that's what it says here. I didn't write this stuff. So look no further than nice our favorite graphic new water for those here on the Twitch. Hot Sauce Studios, Angel Water. This company's on a mission to provide good water. <laughs> um, free of toxins and chemicals and cause long-term damage to your health. We thank them for providing, providing give me the hot sauce team with more than enough H2O. It's like the water boy. <laughs> that's some high-quality H2O. Stay hydrated all year with Walker. water you can trust. <laughs> Angel Water. <laughs> Call 847 382 to get your water tested for free today. Yeah, I actually watched the movie he was in, uh, Catch, Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With Tom Hanks. Where are you he going has a good, next? good part in that. Somewhere exotic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, man. Hey, that, that's going to be part of the show, man. Yeah. The, Christopher the weekly Christopher Walken, uh, Walken check in. Oh, yeah. I, think, I think it just started. Chris, where, where you been, lady? Chris, where you been going? Where, what's, Sponsored what you by tonight? Angel Water. How, how was that? Tasty, huh? Nice and cold. Delicious. <laughs> it's fantastic. We'll get Christopher Walken to endorse Angel Water. We couldn't have a better guy, Chris. Christopher Walken. So can you buy this anywhere? Or are these made specially for Gimme the Hot Sauce? Can you buy this in a store? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, Mark. But it's your Mark, favorite brand, Mark, Chris. Mark, they make it back there in the sink. <laughs> no, <laughs> they put get, bottles on there and put water it's, in the It's sink. right on the Fox River. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> all the good you did for the company, and then you have to wreck it. Oh, man. man. Hey, Another hey, sponsor Chief, bites the dust. Chief, Chief Little Legs, he loves us. <laughs> He's stab you in the neck. <laughs> He's, fanny. He's family. He's family. That's true. He's wow. family. Yeah. He's only 5'1", but that, he's family. Is that, is that him on the bottle? Yeah, it looks like him. What is that? Who is that? I don't know. It like, might be him. Chief like, Little Legs. A little tiny Tim. <laughs> oompa loompa oompa <laughs> dee doo. I've got, got another riddle, riddle for you. you. As we continue hey, to I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. destroy <laughs> our sponsors here on Dinner the Hot Sauce. <laughs> Andy, Tim made me do it. Tim made me do it, Andy. I love you, boy. Hey, early you. in the show, we asked you about uh, our poll question regarding a contract extension talks for Bulls center Nikola Vucevic, and we have the results thanks to our guy, Matty Ice. We got a flat-footed tie. 36% of you, the Bulls, should just bide their time, 
wait and see how he performs this year before pursuing a new contract. And also 36% of you say that they should offer him a two-year extension at similar contract terms to what he's making now. I don't know if they're going to do that. I think if the price is right, they'll, they're will they willing to extend, but it's got to be a team-friendly well, kind of deal. Well, I mean, I mean, he's going to have options. You sure? He's yeah. gonna, there's going to be teams after him. I mean, I, I could see a team like Phoenix, you know, that, that, you know, that likes to space the floor. I could see a team like, you know, the Clippers or someone who may be one big guy away from actually a starting big that can actually take them to the next level. Because the Clippers right now, on paper, look dangerous. Look dangerous. I, I don't know if they have enough to come out the West, but they are going to be one of the best teams in the Western Conference this year. Yeah, they've got a deep roster. You know, they, they did re-sign Zubats to be their center. Uh, but if you can shoot threes in this game, there's always a spot for you. So Vucevic, is, especially if he ups that percentage on three-point range, he's going to have contract options next year. There's no question about it. Right? What do you think? I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Just like whispers. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, the Chicago Sky are wrapping up their regular season. We're rooting for James Wade and his team, and they are, they are right at the top of the WNBA standings. They have a tough game tonight. They're in Las Vegas to play the Aces. Ooh. They need to win at least one, possibly both games, to get the number one seed. And, Stacy, they changed the playoff format. Used to be the top two teams in the standings got buys in the first round. Now everybody's got to play a best-of-three first-round series. So if they're going to win and defend their title – they're going to have to go through a lot of games to get it. Well, I tell you what, they, they can do it, um, but it's going to be tough. You know, that, 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 look, that loss to uh, Seattle. Seattle at home the other home, day, yeah. Hurt them. Um, but I got confidence in them. I, I, they're, they're a team built for the playoffs. They're, they're a team built for the playoffs. doesn't matter if they're the home court advantage or not. I just believe that they're built for the playoffs. I, they've been there. They've done that. Last year they were the, the, the lowest seed and just upset everybody through there. So they've, they've got that experience. They brought pretty much everybody back. Um, and once you win it once, it <laughs> you want to win it again. Absolutely. You know? so, yeah, you know that feeling. Yeah, you know that feeling. So it's not, it's, not like, you know, it's not like they have to have home court advantage. I still think they're good enough to go on the road, even if they're the number two seed and win it all. So the playoffs start August 17th. Get on out to Wintrust Arena and support the Chicago Sky as they look to make it back-to-back WNBA champions. We want to thank our guest, uh, Sir Michael Rox, who joined us earlier in the show. I want to thank the Sriracha crew. I want to thank everybody watching on Twitch and YouTube and everybody that follows us along. Make sure to like and subscribe to the show. We want to get our subscriptions up so we can pedal the show for more money, right? Hey, we don't turn none down but our collar. <laughs> you know, we do, we do. We're, we're up to six bucks a week. Hey. <laughs> yeah. And all the water we can drink. Yes. That's true. Yes, I say. Hey, America, get out there and, and make sure you get to the YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Okay? Absolutely. As our old yes. friend Pavel always used to say, he used to want to hit me in the head all the time yeah. during the show. He yeah. got violent. He still yeah. wants to. <laughs> he still, yeah. His attitude hasn't changed, Mark. If he can catch you by yourself without no witnesses, we might find you in the hallway somewhere. Like, what happened to Mark? He was just, I just yeah. saw him leave. He's on the ground. We had to put him in chalk. How do you say go postal in Russian? Yeah, you know? yeah, we might okay. have to look that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all better leave Pavel alone. Okay? I'll tell you. He He's showed either. me showed me some videos today of Russian technology. Yeah, I was dying. You know, it's a uh, one was a new horse that uh, carry out people in emergency situations. <laughs> it starts That's with, new technology. Yeah. <laughs> it literally was a an event where they're showing this, and then the horse goes berserk, and the guy gets thrown off the gurney off the back of his horse. <laughs> Actually, we got to put that on the show. Pavel has um, his own show in uh, in Russia, isn't he? Uh, podcast yeah, ra- no radio yeah. show here he does, yeah. he does it from here and it broadcasts back in Russia right yeah 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 where he does like he is just, that what started the war yeah I don't know <laughs> it, did, hey. it didn't help <laughs> well <laughs> hey I tell you right now I mean <laughs> hey all I know is I seen I seen a little glimpse of Pavel's show and he's, he's got no clothes on that's all I know he's out there and he's sitting in a leather chair with no clothes on which is a man code violation America and he's filming that and sending it back to Russia it's just chaps oh it's man just chaps He's wearing chaps with no shirt. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, oh, his, wait. like his old boss, Putin. Oh, man. See, yeah, okay. When Putin come to your house with a bunch of bunch of little secret service men, the KGB, and they say, come on with us, little pink man. You going with us? <laughs> <laughs> well, Whispers has got to go. He's got he's to see Lindsey Buckingham oh, impersonators. So no. where, where is that show at? At Rosemont. Rosemont. Yeah. Well, oh, so enjoy. this is a cover yeah. band. 
Right. Yeah, this isn't the real thing. Oh, no, it's not the real thing. Who bought these tickets? It's like Fleet, Fleet Mac or something it's like that. It's like Foot Mac. <laughs> it's Foot Mac. Like, hey, we're going to go see Foot Mac tonight. Not Fleetwood Mac, Foot Mac. Big it's Mac. Mackle Jurgen. It's <laughs> Lindsay Luckingham. <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. Stevie Ricks. Oh, my God. Oh, Christine, Christine McNee. Oh, my God. This is terrible, yeah. America. Yeah, that's the lineup. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so Whispers will have a full report on the next episode yeah. of Give Me the Hot Sauce. But until then, I want to thank oh. everybody. Time to get out of here. Whispers is pa- way past his bedtime. <laughs> way past That's his true. bedtime. Yeah. He's got to go do a couple push-ups before he goes to the, I'm gonna to the little with, ginseng. I'm going yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna to snore two ginsanas. I'll be good. <laughs> Enjoy the Fleetwood Mick concert, buddy. What do they call them, Pip? Oh. Thanks for joining us on Give Me the Hot Sauce. Until next time, Stacy. What did I say? Oh, drive home safely. Oh, oh, it's too much of the apple cider, baby. I've been poisoned. I've been poisoned. Drive home safely, Chicago. Beep, beep.